Hi there, welcome back to the caffeinated classroom and to another edition of Teacher Tip Happy Hour where I give you quick, actionable tips that you can use right now in your classroom and beyond. And today we are going to talk about something that every single teacher has to figure out at some point, probably multiple points actually, in their career, and that is their own system for designing a lesson plan. We are told all about it, more or less taught about it in our credential programs, but do we ever really sit down and talk about best practices when it comes to designing a lesson? I mean, hopefully some of you say yes. Some of you are like, no, and that's why I'm making this video. I'm gonna take you through my step-by-step -step process in designing a lesson, what I think about in the order that I think about it, why that order exists, and then I'm gonna walk you through how I designed a lesson that I taught very, very recently. So, without any further ado, kind of interesting entities, shall we say. For some people, lesson plans to feel like prepared and to feel like they're really on top of things. Lesson plans need to be too like very, very detailed and written out and everything is there to the very minute exactly where everything's gonna go and happen in the classroom. For other people, it's like post-it note with like two or three bullet points about here's what we're gonna learn on, here's what we're gonna do. <sighs> I'm somewhere in the middle of the two of those. I don't have really, really detailed lesson plans figured out. I don't have teacher will say, students will, transition is like anticipatory set. I don't have all of that lined out necessarily, but the whole process is definitely in my head. Mind you, if I've not introduced myself, my name's Marie. I've been teaching for about 13 years. I teach high school, but I have taught primary grades as well. I've taught pretty much the whole gamut. Um, and putting together a lesson has not, I won't say it's become second nature because that sounds like it's not hard. It's still hard. Like even in this second decade of my career, like it's still something that I have to really be mindful in designing and crafting together, but it does get easier and it becomes a bit more natural, if you will, when you have a system that works for you. So I'm gonna talk you through my system. The very first thing that I start with is an objective, whether that objective is to practice something, to learn something new, like what is it that I want students to be getting out of? What do I need them to get out of whatever this lesson is? Um, sometimes, like I said, it's learning something new. Sometimes it's just building background knowledge and some content knowledge kind of a thing so that we can then move on to learn something new. Sometimes it's practicing something that I can tell we just need some more practice in, so I'm gonna design a lesson around that and there's nothing new coming in and sometimes it's laying groundwork for what's coming next right so my lessons are like the little bite-sized pieces of bigger units and all of the units that i design really i've worked really hard to develop a system that makes unit plans feed into e or makes the lessons with how am i saying this? i've worked really really hard over the years to develop a system where i design unit plans that flow really nicely from one thing to the next and everything that we do within a unit plan is all gaining towards a final product goal of big learning and fireworks more on that to come at the end of this video but just know that like the lessons very much reflect the units and the lessons are the little bite-sized pieces. Some of them are bigger bite size and some of them are teeny tiny little nibble sized pieces, but they all still go through the same sort of a process. So the first thing to get back to what I was actually talking about, the first thing is to decide what the objective is. New learning, practice old learning, recall background information, like whatever that is, set it up for the next step, lay some groundwork. What is the purpose or the objective of the lesson that you are designing? Next, I'm gonna figure out what I actually want students to do with whatever it is that the objective covers. Does that make sense? So like, is there an assignment that's coming at the end of this thing? Is it an activity just to kind of like further understanding or to practice something? Is there a discussion coming? What is the, the thing, what is the do, the action that students are going to be taking from this lesson to either practice or show or whatever it is with this knowledge or skill or something? I, you know, I'm just going to keep going, but you know what I'm saying. Third, after they've done the thing that the objective has covered, how do I know that they've learned? What is it that's going to show me that they are indeed practicing the skill, that they have learned the new content, or that they are preparing for the next lesson or the next step, whatever it is. Like, how am I going to know that I am successful and that students are getting out of this, whatever the objective is that I have laid out? Then I'm gonna look at how are they actually going to be getting this content or this skill? How 
am I going to teach the things that I am teaching or review the things that I'm reviewing? By that I mean what sorts of teaching strategies, what sorts of instructional strategies am I going to be employing? Am I going to be lecturing and I try not to lecture for too long and we could debate lecture versus other sorts of teaching in another day because I don't think lecture's all that bad, but there's definitely a time and place for it. Um, am I gonna lecture? Are students going to be doing some sort of an interactive activity to be able to understand something? Are they doing stations where they are guiding their own learning in little timed chunks? Is it a different sort of student-centered like explorative activity? Explorative? Ex exploration activity? <laughs> are they exploring? <laughs> To game learning, how am I going to be actively teaching this? What sorts of strategies instructionally am I going to be using? And then last but not least, how will this engage learners? How am I actually going to be holding on to their attention? How do I expect them to interact with the content or the skill or whatever it is? And what am I going to do strategically to engage that interaction? Okay, so those are my five steps. So let's talk through a lesson that I did not that long ago where I was teaching my 10th grade English students. It was right at the very beginning of a term. So I just got new students. This is probably is actually the first week of class. We go over, um, gleaning a central idea from a nonfiction text. So this lesson, the objective, like I just said, was that students can determine the central idea of a nonfiction text when it's their first time seeing it. So a cold read of a text, first time interacting, be able to read, analyze, synthesize information to determine a central idea. So that's my objective. What do I want students to actually do is I want them to be able to, like I said, cold read a text, be, know the strategies and be able to attempt an analysis by interacting with the text, marking and annotating, knowing what to look for in those ways and being able to use those marks and annotations to synthesize their information and determine a one to two sentence central idea. Okay, pretty simple, short, sweet, to the point, can be extremely dry when teaching. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what I'm looking for as evidence of learning and then how I actually teach it and the strategies instructional the instructional strategies that I use to deliver this skill and how to do it and then how I extract practice from there out of my students. So the way that I know if they're actually getting it is that I can see evidence in their work. That's why marking and annotating is such a big part of this and like the reason that I'm talking through this part of the lesson is that I'm always kind of questioning my why. All of the little things that I'm having students do need to have a purpose, right? So like I've already laid out my objective. I have what I want students to be able to do. Now, how do I know that they've been able to do that? Well, if they have marked and annotated their their uh, copy of their article in a way that reflects what I taught them, then I should be able to see evidence that they are comprehending what they are reading. And if they're comprehending what they're reading, they're able to take chunks of the text in the way that I'm gonna show them how to do it and boil it all down to one big idea. So I'm really looking for evidence of comprehension. So how am I going to teach this? Well, I'm gonna employ a few different strategies. I am going to directly lecture just a little tiny bit and kids are gonna take notes. They're gonna take notes on the steps to take, how to unpack an article and how to like step one, read it. Step two, make a couple of columns and chunk up your text. Like I'm gonna give them the strategies that they're going to use in the order they're going to use them and have them write them down on a sheet of notes so that that's a reference sheet. After I have lectured, the next instructional strategy I'm going to employ is a demonstration, a think aloud. I'm going to walk through the process that I just showed them on an actual text. Everybody has a copy of the exact same article. So students are able to, oh, and I have it under a document camera because I'm gonna use some technology to aid in what I'm doing. I remember when I was in high school and, and my teachers would have that like, vis-a-vis, -vis, right, the um, the transparency marker all over their hands for the same sort of a purpose and they always ran out of transparencies to like run their copies on. <gasps> I do love technology and document cameras are kind of the best thing ever when you're an English teacher and you're doing a lot of writing on text. Anyway, students are following along with my think aloud and my demonstration. It's essentially kind of like a science class demonstration except I don't have beakers. I have highlighters and pens and paper. And I'm thinking through the whole entire process and I am talking to them in terms of the process that they just took notes on. So the lecture leads into demonstration, leads into, I will stop at some point in time with this process that I am doing on this article and I'll have them do the next piece as like a think pair share. Then I'm going to pick up my demonstration again so that 
at the end I'm thinking through and showing them exactly how I picked apart this text and led them through the process that I have taught them and here's my central idea that I got. The next and final instructional strategy is I let them do some individual practice, go through the same process on their own, come up with their central idea, and from there we will evaluate how correct they are or how much more work or where I need to kind of triage some things and give them a little bit of pointers and guidance. So what did I do within that whole entire thing? And that takes about, I mean, it's probably like 45 minutes from start to finish, depending on the length and the complexity of the text that we're looking at. And kiddos are probably going to take the um, independent article home. Timing is definitely something you want to look at when it comes down to designing a lesson, but that's not really what I'm talking about here. I just thought I would like throw that out there because I had a feeling I was going to get that question. But the last thing that I look at when I'm designing a lesson is how am I engaging students? How am I keeping their attention? How am I making sure that they are engaging with the content and the material and like actually actively learning? Because I can teach at them all day long. If they're not engaging and actively learning, it's not going to do a whole heck of a lot. We start with me up in front doing a lecture, quick and dirty lecture with some bullet points and I'm explaining the bullet points. Then we're swapping out papers. Maybe I have them stand up and sit back down. But then their attention shifts to me thinking loud and thinking through something and then their attention shifts to doing it themselves and then to talking to a partner and then having to share out listening to me again and then all of a sudden they're up and moving and getting their own article so that they can work on it on their own and they're in their own headspace so that just those tiny little shifts will keep engagement going and so I'm doing that very intentionally to make sure that I have their attention for as long as I possibly can. There you have it. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just the like really the five big things that I look at. There's obviously more to lesson planning, but those are like the big ticket items that I am looking to make sure I cover in order to have a really well designed lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please, 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 if you've not already done so, subscribe. Click the little thumbs up if you liked this video and you want to see more like them. Click the bell so you don't miss any of these weekly videos that I am uploading. And also, if you would take a moment and in the comments down below, please leave your biggest takeaway from today's video or any questions and or any questions that you might still have. And if you have not already visited thecaffeinatedclassroom.com. I have a bunch of lessons and resources and activities and some workshops and some mini courses there that if you like what you see here, you are probably really going to like what you see there, including, I told you at the beginning of this video, I have a little announcement. I have a brand new mini course workshop all about unit planning and my process for designing a unit plan. A unit plan that is cohesive, that from the very beginning, every single thing you are doing is leading towards a common goal at the end. And that common goal at the end is some sort of a culminating piece that really shows learning and is an exhibition of skills and everything flows nicely and everything has purpose. The process that I use is way simpler than you might think. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of things. It takes a lot of the stress and the drama of what am I gonna teach tomorrow? What am I gonna teach tomorrow? How is this not busy work? All of that stuff whoosh, out of your way. It's a great system to really like boil down and simplify and make unit planning purposeful. So if you wanna check that out, there's a link in the description box down below. And I think that is just about it for today. Thank you again for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.